you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all may have your seats, amen. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I was thinking, uh, Brother Carry On, and, and before we, amen, y'all go ahead and film, but before we even get into the message, I was thinking about what I told you about R.W. Shambach. R.W. Shambach, see, I, I mentioned this in the prayer, and just it just quickened in my spirit to mention it now. When this man came to this church, even though he was not officially a member yet, he came working. He came working. He, he, Brother Scott and I were working on the building. We were putting lights in. We were getting ready to put other things in the church. We're continually improving this old building because when we got this building, it used to be an old bar. It was called Hodges Bar. It was an old beer joint. A den of sin, and God changed it to a house of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A house of glory, a house of peace. And it was tore up from the floor up. I'm telling you, the place was tore up. And, and through the saints of God, the saints of God got together and they, they helped repair things. And they painted the, matter of fact, all that pretty paint in there, the white paint, the blue paint, the lavender paint, the ladies did it. Not the men. The ladies did it. Oh, all the decorations on the wall, the ladies did it. Oh, hallelujah. And they cleaned that place up. Some of the stains, we still couldn't get off the floor. Some of the beer stains and whatever, the blood stains. You know, but the only blood stain that we don't want removed is the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. But I'm reminded of R.W. Shambach. You know, uh, R.W. Shambach, years ago, he was a, a, a world-renowned tent revivalist. And, and he yeah. preached all over evangelists. And he preached all over the United States. I mean, he, I mean, they would televise his tent revivals. They were so big. He preached all over the world. And he, uh, uh, Brother Shambach, when he told the story, and I just remember the story because it blessed me about being a laborer with your hands. Being a laborer. The Bible says whatever you find your hands to do, do it with all your might. Do it with all your might. You know, Amen. put your hands to the plow and don't look back. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us. And, and so... So Shambach was putting up his tent with his crew and uh, um, this young man comes up one time and he says, the Lord sent me to help you. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm a, I'm a young evangelist. I said, the Lord sent me to help you. Shambach said, he was down and he was putting a rope on. He says, grab that hammer. He says, no, 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 preacher. You don't understand. The Lord sent me to help you. Shambach said, grab that hammer. No, preacher, the Lord sent me to help you. He said, boy, if the Lord sent you to help me, right now I'm putting up this tent. Grab that hammer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, sometimes some people think, well, you know, they have to jump right into the pulpit, you know, and start preaching for the Lord or jump right into evangelism. You know, they get a little word in them and they think, oh, well, well, you know, I'm going to be a mighty man of God. I'm going to have a great cathedral and all this. But see, that's not how God does it. God says, be faithful with the little thing first. Because he that is faithful with the least will be faithful with much. And he that is faithful, the Bible says, with another man, then God can give him his own. Hallelujah. We got to be faithful. You know, I thank God. And in saying that, I want to say I thank God for all the faithful people here. First of all, you're faithful to God. And then you're faithful to 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 the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then last of all, for those who are members of my Lord's House of Prayer, you have been faithful to me as your pastor. You know, it, it's a blessing yeah. to see people not only come out early in the morning to worship the Lord in a sunrise service, but to see people come and labor every day. Amen. To see people, you know, put their hand to the plow. You know, and 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 just for the sake, I'm not going to mention names. You know, I want to mention every name, but I want to say this. Thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you allow the Lord to do in your life. Thank you. Thank you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, open up your Bibles to St. John chapter 20. St. John chapter 20. Amen. Now, y'all know I can shout. We did that yesterday. But I told y'all I'm a pastor teacher and we're going to teach a little word and we're going to preach a little word. So please give God your attention today. Amen. Don't let nothing distract you. 
Amen. Don't let tiredness. I know some of y'all that were here late last night, you're probably tired this morning. But don't let that hold you back. Give God your attention today. Amen. See, that's part of that diligently seeking the Lord. That's part of that pressing through. That's part of that. You know, because some people say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I remember in the Baptist church, e even the deacons would say, I get my best sleep during church. <laughs> I, I get my best sleep when the preacher starts preaching. You know, now I can understand in some of those circles because some of those preachers would put you to sleep. <laughs> I didn't mean that in no bad way. For y'all that are viewing by Facebook and by YouTube, please don't get mad at me. I grew up Baptist, so <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But this is when we press through. Because, you know, and, and once again, I'm not, in the, not even in the message yet, but God, the Holy Spirit is telling me to say this. Because we all know the parable of the sword and the seed. We've all heard it many, many times. I know my Lord's house of prayer. I've heard it many times. Because, see, it's not what is preached, but it's how you listen. Amen. See, when, when, when Jesus, he was teaching his disciples, and, and, and he said to them, he says, the sower came and he sowed a seed. He sowed, and he said, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured that which was sowed. He said, some was sown on thorn, stony ground. And it just had little, little root because the earth was, it was hard underneath and, and it's only the dust and, and so it only got, but when the trials came, the tribulations came, it withered away. And he said, some was sown among thorns. And then when that was was sown among thorns, he said it, 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 that the, the thorns crept in and choked it out. And then he said, some was sown on good ground. And that good ground yielded some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And see, and, and the disciples did not understand it. Okay, are y'all with me this morning? Amen. See, sometimes when you don't understand something, you need to come to Jesus apart. You need to come to the pastor apart. See, that's why, you know, my members will tell you, even my grandchildren and everybody will tell you, well, after I finish preaching, I'll ask them, what did you get? I'll ask them, what did you get? What was your takeaway? Because if there was no takeaway, then there was nothing imparted. If you didn't receive something on good ground, then there was nothing imparted, no matter how much the sower sold. And so they didn't understand. What was, the, what was the parable? Now, now the word parable means it's a natural story to convey a spiritual truth. Mm -hmm. A natural story to convey a spiritual truth. And so they didn't get the spiritual truth of the matter because Jesus was talking about farming. He was talking about sowing seeds. But he says, and they came to him and he says, we, we didn't get it. We didn't understand it. And he shared with them the parable. And he said, the sower sows the word. And when the word goes forth, sometimes it falls on the wayside. In other words, you're here. But you ain't getting it. And the reason you ain't getting it because you're not really here. You're somewhere else. Your body is here. But your heart and your mind is somewhere else. It's somewhere else. It's like sowing on the wayside. And he says, and that which was sown on shallow ground, oh, you got a little bit, and you got all full of emotion, and you felt good. Yeah. You felt good. But you didn't let it get in deep. You only just let it get a little bit, so you got the feeling, but that's all. You didn't get the revelation. And so when you got the, the feeling and not the revelation, so you go out into the world and when the trials come and the tribulation come, for the word's sake, you fall away because you had no depth. You didn't let it get in. You didn't let it get in. And then he said, some is sown amongst thorns. And he said, amongst thorns is when the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things, all in there as the word is being sown, is entering and it chokes the word 
out of me. In other words, your mind is on, on your worries, on your problems, on your situation, instead of your mind being on the word of God. Your mind got to be on the word. When we come, if you look in your Bible, if you read in your Bible, every time the disciples or the believers came together with one mind and with one accord, God showed up and he showed up mightily and he showed out. God wants to show up this morning. He wants to show up and show out. He's already here because he's here in me. Now, I don't know about you, but he's here in me. Are you in St. John chapter 20? Hallelujah. And this is the account where Mary had went, uh, and that Mary Magdalene, one of the Marys, not Mary Jesus' mother, but one of the Marys had went to the tomb. And she went to see Jesus, and no one was there to roll away the stone, but however, she went to the tomb, and when she found that the, the tomb was empty, she went and told the disciples, the tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. You know, and there was two angels sitting there. And, they, you know, and they said, he's risen. He's not here. Well, you know, and, 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 and John, I'm, and I'm mixing up the accounts right now. When you read in each account, they'll tell it a little bit different. But when you put them all together, why search ye the living amongst the dead? But that's not where I'm going today. I'm going to go a little different. After he rose that day. In St. John chapter 20, starting at verse 19, that same day the Bible says, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the door was shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, peace be unto you. And when he had said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad. And when they saw the Lord, they were glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them, peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even so I send I you. I send you. Amen. And when they had said this, when he, had, when he had said this, he breathed on them and he said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive the power from on high. Hallelujah. Receive the anointing, the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And whomsoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whomsoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, and we're going to be talking a little bit about Thomas. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when he came. Then the disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands and the print of the nail and put my finger into the print of the nail and thrust my hand into his side. I will not believe. Meditate on that for a second. Some people want a sign. If they don't see a sign, if they don't see him physically for themselves, they will not believe. And after eight days, how many days? Eight. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said Jesus to Thomas. Now he's going to speak directly to Thomas. And he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless. Yes. Be not faithless, but believe. But believe. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God, my 
Lord, my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou believe. Blessed are they that have not seen me and yet believe. Hallelujah. Blessed are they. I, I, 
I, I got nerve problems. He came to heal that too. He came to heal that too. We go through life carrying burdens we don't need to carry because Jesus bore them for us. He bore our sins and carried our burdens. And with his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. And be not faithless, but believe. Be not faithless, but believe. Turn to Luke chapter 4 very quickly. When Jesus came on his public ministry, and he announced his ministry, he went into the temple on the Sabbath day, and they opened up the book Isaiah, and he turned to the place. He turned to the place and he said in verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now who are the poor? That's just not those who are broken without money, but those who are poor in spirit. Those who, who are lacking in spirit. He came to preach the gospel, the good news that you don't have to be poor no more. You don't have to be poor in your pocketbook and you don't have to be poor in your spirit. He said to preach the gospel to the poor. He anointed me. He has anointed me to heal. To do what? To heal the brokenhearted. Oh, see, people get all in despair. Their heart get broken. You know, uh, uh, and for you young people, you know, your boyfriend leave you, your girlfriend leave you, and you want to go and commit suicide. Jesus said he'll heal your broken heart. Yeah. Yeah. He broke my heart. She broke my heart. I remember even when I was a teenager, and brother, I was stupid. I was stupid. I had this little girl in my, in my neighborhood, and I thought she was so pretty. And we were dating for a little while, and then we broke up, and we said we're not going to talk to anybody else for a while. And next thing I know, I see this guy over our house, and I'm crying. Ah, the other guy is over there. Ah, I want to commit suicide. And I ran. I ran to the bridge, and I was going to jump off of the bridge. And the Lord told me, you idiot. <laughs> Go ahead and kill yourself. She's still going to be with the other guy. Yeah. You idiot. Don't be an idiot for the devil. Don't be stupid for the devil. He came to heal your broken heart. Your heart get broken. Somebody leave you. Somebody break up with you. Somebody uh, disrespect you or something. Amen. Give it to Jesus. And then pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for them. He came to heal the broken hearted. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To set, to, 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 to uh, preach deliverance to the captive. Have you been captive today? You know the Bible says in the book of Peter that, that some of you are captive by the devil at his will. Because you won't repent, you won't confess. You won't confess. He says if you were just through the acknowledging of the truth, through the acknowledging of the truth, confess your sin to God. Then he will he will deliver you, so you can recover yourself. The book of Peter says, yeah. out of the snare of the devil yes. that has taken you captive, have bound you and tied you up, and have put you in the prison of sin. He's taking you captive, and he says, if you will just repent, if you will just be obedient to the word of God. You can recover yourself out of the snare of the devil. The snare means the traps. The traps and, and the tricks of the devil. You can recover yourself out of the snare of the devil who have taken you captive. Because Jesus came to set the captive free. To free you from sin and bondage. To free you from, from the, all, all degradation of life. Hallelujah. He said to recover of sight to the blind. Mm. And that's, look, and that's double fold, that's twofold. Because there are some people that have blind eyes. If you notice, I wear glasses, but not when I'm preaching. Because when I'm preaching, I can see. I can't see your face, but I can see the word. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but he came to recover the sight. But the recovering of sight of the blind is also recovering your spiritual sight. Yeah. 
the apostle Paul was a, was a, was a spiritual man in, in, in his religion. In his religion. He was a Pharisee, the Pharisee. And he was faithful in his religion. To, to the point where he persecuted the church. Because he believed so much in religion, but not in Jesus Christ. But when Jesus knocked him down on the road of Damascus, when he knocked him down, and he blinded his eyes physically so he can awaken him spiritually. He said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, who you persecute. What should I do, Lord? You go into the town and there's going to be a man named Ananias. He's going to come and lay his hand on you and recover your sight. And people had to lead him into the town. And Ananias, he didn't want to go where, where Saul the, uh, Tarsus was. Because he said, Lord, you sure? This is, this is the guy that's putting us in jail. This is the guy that's killing us. You sure you want me to go and, and lay hands on him? Yes, go. Because he's going to be a servant for me. Because I have shown him what he must suffer for me. Mm. And Ananias went in and he says, Brother Saul, the Lord has sent me. And when he laid his hands on him, the Bible says that scales fell from his eyes. The blindness yes. fell from. See, when you put the, the, the covering over your heart, that is the blindness that you have when you don't see the word of God for what it is. To recover of sight to the blind. And then he says, to set to liberty them that are bruised. We've been bruised and battered, ladies and gentlemen. We've been beat up in this world. The world don't like you. We think, oh, this is the party. You know, my son said something. We fellowship a lot. My son that's in California, my second son, we fellowship a lot over the phone. He calls mom and daddy once a week almost. And uh, he's in the military, active duty military. And he calls him, but he said something. He says, the world don't understand. If they don't get saved, this is the best they got it. <laughs> he said, y'all, come on, y'all better catch that revelation. If you don't get saved, this is the best you got it. Mm. It ain't going to get no better. Because when you die, <laughs> Pastor Priest started yesterday. When you, when you die, hell is your home. And it's eternal torment. Don't think you're going to be, oh, I'm dead. I don't feel nothing. I'm, I'm in it. And don't be like those idiots that say, yeah, man, I don't want to go to heaven. It's all going to be boring in heaven. I want to go to hell with my buddy. We're going to party. Yeah, right. The Bible says you're going to be in eternal torment yes. come on, come on. with the fire that's burning yes. with brimstone. Yes. Eternal torment. Yes. Hallelujah. And it says it's quick. And that's forever. In other words, you're going to feel that burning. You're going to feel that burning. You know, you did something yesterday and, and the other day too that 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 blessed me when you said that guy said he don't believe in hell and you struck the match and you said feel this. And he said, ah, it's hot. And he said, hell is hotter. <laughs> but when people tell me they don't believe, well, I don't believe in heaven or hell. I don't believe that 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 there's a heaven and you know that when we die, we just die. And and I said, well, just because you say you don't believe don't mean it's not true. Because you can say you don't believe in gravity. But go up to the Tower of Americas in downtown San Antonio and jump off the top and say, I don't believe in gravity. I don't believe in gravity. And that sudden stop will be your evidence. <laughs> don't, let the la don't let the sudden stop in hell have to be your evidence of the truth. Just because you don't believe it, don't make it not true. On, don't let that sudden stop, that sudden, that last final destination be your evidence. But be thou not, be thou not faithless, but believe. But believe. Thomas doubted because he didn't, wasn't in the room and he didn't see him. But when Jesus rose, he appeared unto to, to not only the twelve, but many others. And he ministered for 40 days before he ascended. In the name of Jesus, he was bruised for our iniquity. He was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
and with his stripes, we are healed. We are delivered. We are set free. Be not faithless. Be not faithless. Be not faithless. But believe. But believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. See, and, and the Bible lets us know, turn to Peter, uh, 1 Peter chapter, chapter